what is the number one need in our day? Is it lower gas prices? Is it uh, a higher minimum wage? Is it peace? What is it that the scripture tells us is the number one need in our day? Uh, Barry, what do you think? High on the list would be pray for the Shalom of Jerusalem. Yeah. Yeshua said, seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. So I would say that's probably the top of the list. Yeah. I would agree with that. That, uh, you know, the, the prayer, he says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Psalm 122, verse 6. May they prosper who love you. And uh, why is this? Because this is a prayer about the kingdom coming. Before the, the words were spoken on the northern shore of the Galilee uh, by Yeshua, when he was teaching the disciples how to pray, he said, your kingdom come, your will be done, which is basically an echo uh, or an expounding of Psalm 122, verse 6. Seek first his kingdom, his righteousness. Uh, this book that we read from cover to cover, from Genesis to Maps, is about a coming kingdom. But what is the, 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 the one item in the midst of that that Yeshua would say to us is the most important? The, the one thing that we are to keep our eyes on, the one thing that we are to be guarding against is given to us in Matthew chapter 24, when Yeshua is, is being asked, uh, what will be the sign of, of the end of days, uh, loosely translated there? And here's what he says in uh, Matthew chapter 24, in verse 4, Yeshua replied, watch out, don't let anyone deceive you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Messiah, will lead many astray. And he goes on and talks about wars and rumors of wars and famines and earthquakes from there. So Yeshua's number one, number one point to the disciples was, let no man deceive you. Now, I, I looked at this, Barry, uh, before we went online uh, this morning, and um, I looked at it, first of all, in Greek, and the word deceive means deceive in Greek. So went over to uh, a language that gives us a little bit more meaning, and uh, I looked at the word deceive in Hebrew, and here's what the word says. Here's what the, the meaning of this word, which is patal, and it means to be spacious, be open, and be wide. So what was Yeshua saying to us? Don't be so open-minded that your brains have fallen off. <laughs> Oh, Barry, we're supposed to be open-minded about everything. I just put in a, an application for, for Kathy for her, uh, for her passport. I put it in online and found out that I could have I put on there that, you know, her, her gender has been fluid over the last years. And no, absolutely not. I, I'm not open-minded. There's, there's many things in my life that I'm not open-minded on. And uh, it's, it's interesting that it's becoming more and more things in the world that I'm not open-minded. We are called to enter in through a narrow gate. And Barry, is the gate narrowing as we walk it out? Well, the enlightened ones who oh. are more in tune with the current persuasions of our, of our world you know, it's not just the United States, it's the world. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It, you know, this, this goes across the board. The enlightened mindset says that we are more inclusive and more tolerant. That we are not, by comparative opposite, we are not bigoted and um, offensive. So, you know, to me, the, from what I, what I see in trends, the worst sin that somebody can commit is not murder or, you know, a, a grand theft or something of that nature, corruption. It is the sin of offense. Now, Yeshua said that if we were to offend one of the little ones, deceiving mm -hmm. the children, deceiving the innocent, 
he used the the picture of, it'd be better that a millstone be tied around your neck and you'd be thrown in the sea. Um, but he also said when the disciples of Yochanan, John the Baptist, were sent to him to ask if he was the Messiah that was to come, are you Mashiach ben David as well as Messiah or Mashiach ben Yosef? He gave them the signs of cred uh, credibility, uh, of authenticity, uh, that he was indeed Messiah ben David as well. Mm -hmm. And then he said this, Mike. He said, tell, tell Yochanan, blessed is he who is not offended because of me. Yeshua, Yeshua called things as they were. I when like it says, him. I like him for that, you know. Well, you know, he's right. I, I, I get you. Yeshua. It says that he, you know, he was accused of eating with publicans and sinners, but he was not there to justify their lifestyle. Yeah, he was not there to sin with them. He didn't get drunk with the drunks in order to be affiliated with the drunks and have some affinity with them. But rather, he, he went where the darkness was and shone his light. That's a skill that most people don't have. But, Mike, the idea that we are to be submissive <clears throat> to current world trends so that we, <clears throat> excuse me, we don't ruffle a feather or cause someone some sense of an offended issue. We're not here to hit you over the head with a sledgehammer. Nobody's trying to set a bomb off on you, but Yeshua said that they're going to hate you because they first hated me. So, you know, just walking upright, you don't have to say a word. Just being light in the middle of darkness, there are those of darkness who have a problem with you. Mm -hmm. uh, but let me, let me finish with this. To be enlightened, in my opinion, requires you also being naive. You can't live a serious, thought-provoking, contemplative life examining the scriptures and seriously looking to apply them to your life and be among the enlightened ones as they are presenting themselves currently in our world. Oh, no. No, it's two different paths. Yeah, in fact, the more open-minded the, the world becomes, the more closed-minded I become. <laughs> it, it, it seems that the, the more, I mean, it's true. It is, it's true. The more people want to just kind of grab a hold of everything. But let, let's, let's focus in on an aspect of this, of be not deceived. Many will come in my name saying I'm the Messiah and will... Uh, and will deceive many. What this has been taught through the years is that many would come in their name, okay, and say that they're the Messiah, but that's not what he says. He says, many will come and proclaim me as the Messiah, but in doing so, will deceive many. Why? Because it is a name right or wrong name okay and this is not a, a a teaching on how do you say the name i was asked the other day regarding yeshua is it yahashua or what and i said i I'm, that's not the concern of mine okay i'm not concerned as much about the title of the person though i refuse to use the english westernized given title of Yeshua as Jesus, I, I, I can't go there anymore, Barry. Um, you know, You're I, not I, enlightened, I, Mike. I know, I know. Uh, and some people say, well, you know, I was saved under, you know, Jesus. Okay, I got that. So was I. But I'm, I'm, I'm watching my grandson right now, one of my grandsons. He's calling his dad, dad, dad. And that's fine when you're four or five years old. But if he's still doing that when he's 25, we have a problem. 
See, using the proper title to a person is part of our maturity of knowing the person, but that's another issue. My issue is this. You can use the correct name, but you can, what word, I, I, I know the word I'd like to use, but I don't. But you can, uh, oh, what word can I use now? I got that one word in my head. Uh, you can use the proper title, the proper name of Yeshua, but compromise the identity of the one who is attached to the name. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it's um, it's an, an, an easy illustration is we call ourselves Americans and uh, we go abroad somewhere in another country and we give Americans a bad name by our conduct or our expectations really? to be catered to, or we can go over abroad and give our, our fellow citizens a good report. Choice is ours. Mm -hmm. If you ask, you know, uh, <laughs> every time I've been to Israel, people will look at you and say, American, <laughs> yeah. how did you know? What the, it's not on my chest, you know? They, they know, yeah. but you know, they also understand, okay, you're American, you want, this is what you're going to want, because they, they, they learn people. The same thing happens in, in, in the realm of the body of Messiah. We just understand that certain, certain sectors uh, of the body is going to want to be catered to in certain ways, or they're going to have certain opinions. We understand certain denominations teach certain things. Where, where is the, the part of us, though, that says, I'm here to put on a good reputation for my Messiah. When I walk away, I want you to see Yeshua in a favorable light. Not according to your own desires. I'm not here to allow Yeshua to uh, affirm error in you. Mm -hmm. But even if I correct you on error, I can do it in such a way that you realize he's right, Yeshua's right, and I need to change and not be offended. My, the, we've lost the art where a brother can say to a brother, uh, we need to talk about something because mm -hmm. this isn't right in you. And uh, was, it, was it not the writer of the Psalms that wrote about that he would be, he would rather be a, a rebuked by a brother than to be congratulated by his enemy? Something that's a very, very loose paraphrase. Yeah. But that's the principle. So we're wanting the world to applaud us and to accept us and come sit with us and to approve of our teaching and preaching and singing and dancing because it makes us feel good. Yeshua says, I want to come among you and be honored and glorified. And the two don't always mix. Okay, so if we have a, I found a word, corrupt. If my image of Messiah is corrupt, Mm -hmm. then all I can teach is a corrupted image of Messiah. And, and let, me, let me give you the, what I feel is the number one corruption regarding it within Messianic Hebrew roots circles today. The number one corrupted image of Messiah is that he's not really a Jew. That, oh yeah, he, he was from the tribe of Judah, that he will return as the lion of the tribe of Judah. But, but here's the thing, when the lion returns, he's going to devour that tribe because of all their error. Because those Jews, there is very, within Hebrew roots, Messianic circles, an anti-Semitic spirit 
You cannot have a correct image of who Yeshua is, was, is, and forever will be of the tribe of Judah with an anti-Semitic root within you. Now, I'm not saying that Yeshua is going to line up with all the rabbinic things of, of what I term a religious system. And, and I will, I mean, I will go after, as you know, any system there is. If it's religious, count me out. What kept me away from the Almighty for about almost fit, about 15 years of my life was religion. I hated religion. And I'll go on record as this. I still do. Religious systems keep people away from God, not drive them to him. And if the system that you're a part of has any, any seed left of it, of anti-Semitism, and maybe the last, the, the last thing to be destroyed in our walk away from uh, Catholicism, many Protestant religions, maybe the last thing to, for us to deal with within these, this Messianic Hebrew roots walk is the anti-Semitism that was placed within us then. I've often heard people say uh, when you discuss your Hebrew based belief with them. Uh, quote unquote, oh, I just love the Jewish people. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many times oh, I just love the Jewish people. Sickening. And you, you wanted to start this conversation. Well, what do you know about the Jewish people? And they don't know anything other than they may say, well, the men wear that little thing on their heads and they worship on Saturday. And that might be about all that they know. Very generalized understanding. But what I have found in further conversation when people say, oh, I just love the Jewish people, they are imagining them as the um, the only way I know how to say it, and it's a corny way of saying it, the creme de la creme of the um, of the um, uh, available harvest in their oh. imagination, I just love the Jewish people, so I want to convert them to Christianity. Yeah. Not realizing, you know, and Hanok Young helped me to understand this. He, he he said something other to me one time as I was driving into the airport. He said, "More than we fear." Over 100,000 rockets that Hezbollah has aimed at us from Lebanon. More than we fear a nuclear Iran, we fear conversion. And I was taken aback by that. He said, people don't understand that if our family members and friends convert to Christianity, they are taught to deny their Jewish heritage and identity and become someone else, and we lose them. He said, we fear losing our families. He said, we can survive, you know, rockets and, and, and nuclear attacks. We can fight back. But once someone has been indoctrinated and converted, you know, they, they're lost as far as lost to their Jewish identity and heritage and culture. Christianity as, as a whole, it's not just here in America, as a whole of the world over, in converting lost souls basically has desired that they become um, recultured and re-identified. We're not, you know, when, when they came here to, the, to America, 
the, it was the goal of we need to take these savages that they call the Native Americans, who in fact had very sophisticated cultures and, and societies. And probably very sophisticated worship of Yah. Indeed. Uh, and convert them to change their clothes, cut their hair, take their native jewelry off, lose their instruments, and become European. Uh, you go to Africa, and you know we want to win the lost tribes of Africa uh, to Christianity and teach them to eat with a spoon and a fork. Why? You know, yeah. so we impose our beliefs on people, Mike. Yeah. But when it comes to to that which is Hebraic or in specific, in particular Jewish. And our imaginations, we can't leave that alone. Because you talk about the anti-Semitic spirit. It's a resistance. I don't want to become Jewish. Yah's not asking you and me to become Jewish. We're not Jewish. True. But we are fellow Hebrews, and there is a similarity of culture that greatly overlaps. You see, Barry, I have more in common today, and, and I'm, I understand what you're saying. I'm, I'm thinking that there are a lot of people out there that are, or some at least, they're, they're having to try to kind of digest what you just said. Hey, we've been in conversations enough. I understand what you're saying. We're on the same page. Uh, we have to face an issue here, Barry, that Protestant Christianity is just one step, for the most part, Protestant Christianity is one step right of Catholicism. Catholicism today is not a religion that lines up with this book that I read. Yes, they may have some of the same names and the same thing, but it does not line up. Hey, I go, I've been to Catholic churches in Europe, and I've, I've seen what has happened I, I've seen the churches and all this kind of stuff that's there. I, I've, I've, I've been there. Mm -hmm. It does not line up with this book. The idols, all that kind of stuff. But to understand that there, that we today, as or, or Protestant religions today, are really only one step to the right of Catholicism. That much of the Catholic trappings are still within Christian churches. More than they would be comfortable with. Oh, I have more in common with the observance of my Jewish brothers and sisters than I do with the observance of most Christian brothers and sisters. And I guess I'll use that, okay? Here, here's, a, here's one. I know we've only got, uh, or you're somehow you're, your uh, Zoom is timing out on us, but yeah, let's even put this in. I recently took a trip to Israel. In going to Israel, you know what I was told? Somebody said, well, why'd you go? Another person said, yeah, he's not a Jew. I said, you know, I didn't have to go. I didn't have to be Hawaiian to go to Hawaii. The, the person would never, would never even know this. That was an anti-Semitic statement. But here's, here's the rest of it. When, when you say that you're going to Israel, the, the number one statement that you're asked, besides why, is this. You're going to witness to the Jews? You're going on a missions trip? <laughs> you know, when I went to Korea, nobody asked me if I was going on a missions trip. When I went to South Africa, nobody asked me if I was going to on a missions trip. But if you go to Israel, the only reason to go to Israel would be to go to on a on a missions trip. And when you come back, the average person will ask you, did you witness to the Jews? How arrogant. How arrogant those statements are, Barry. Because the identity of the one that we refer to as Yeshua, who I believe to be the Messiah of Israel. I don't back up on that statement. The one who I who we say we believe, most people cannot put it in their mind that he is a Jew. 
there's still an anti-Semitic spirit that is deceiving many people. So we need to realize in closing here, Mike, Yeshua is not only a Jew, he is Jewish. Yes. Culturally, by identity, by his history, by his current status, by his future, he will rule the world as a Jewish Messiah of Israel. And his culture, his language, his identity, his perspective, his worldview will be righteous, but it will also be Jewish. And Isn't that may be offensive to us, but we need not, you know, because of our, our, um, our Gentile westernized mindsets, it's going to cut across our grains. But It will be righteous and the world will have shalom because of it. Yes. So. And is that why the enemy will try to defeat at the end and will cause many to rise up against the almighty is because the world has been too Jewish for them. <laughs> uh, we could go on another hour or two we on might. this and we might. Folks, um, just we encourage you, check your worldview and your perspective according to the word. And be sure that we are following the, the authentic Messiah as the word presents him. For me, over 20 years ago, it was life-changing, yeah. world-changing. And um, I am where I am and who I am now because of a challenge to the identity of Yeshua. Uh, we encourage you to share on your social media, uh, invite your friends to watch, and, uh, and we welcome your comments and your questions as well. So we'll be back again next week. And until next week, Mike, shalom, bro. Shalom, man. See you then. <laughs>